Hi, my name is David Lentz and I'm going to be talking about the road to a standard about how Selenium has become a web standard in the next few years. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, a, road, a road to a standard. Um, everyone's heard that Selenium has started the process of becoming a W3 standard, which means that if a browser wants to become standards compliant, hopefully Selenium will be bundled with it. Um, so, what I'm going to try to do is just walk you through like kind of where we've been, how we've got here, and where we're going. So that like it's it's been a bit of a bumpy road, and not everyone's fully aware of it. But hopefully, we can I can you know tell you a bit about it. Um, so about seven years ago. Jason Huggins was working uh, for a company called ThoughtWorks. Uh, ThoughtWorks is a consultancy and he was working on their um, expenses and um, timesheet application. Uh, at the time, uh, Internet Explorer had roughly 80-85% of the market share. Uh, there was this fledgling browser out uh, from a company called Mozilla and, you know, ThoughtWorks being uh, what they, they like to consider themselves thought leaders um, had these people who were trying out the new browser. Um, so every week he had this problem of he would release a new version um, and fix bugs that were in Fire, like that came up that when people were using Fire, uh, uh, Firefox and would break Internet Explorer. Next week he would fix it and vice versa would happen. Um, so he created Selenium, uh, the original incarn uh, incarnation with, uh, that was kind of like fit. So you can kind of still see it around in Selenium IDE if you've ever used it. Um, that's how you originally designed it. Um, a lot of people don't like it, it's not flexible enough and things like that. Um, but his heart was in the right place. Um, so he, he created this framework and it was released. The same year, uh, Brett Petticord created Water. And Water was, uh, took a different approach to browser automation. Uh, he decided that if you wanted to drive a browser, you needed to drive it from the outside in, where Selenium was driving it from the inside out, because it was pure JavaScript. Um, driving a browser from the outside in is a lot harder, because uh, you need to understand all the components of the browser and fix all the problems that come up along the way. Um, so, he created this, um, little known fact is that Brett was the person that kind of, uh, within ThoughtWorks released Selenium, uh, because he was the testing guru that ThoughtWorks had hired, so they put his name on it, uh, which upsets Jason a little. Um, but they had both had this idea that browser automation needed to be good and we needed a way to test our web applications because the web was becoming the way forward. Um, and then in 2005, uh, Simon Stewart decided that he was going to try to uh, create another browser automation uh, framework and create a web driver. Um, and because uh, Simon's a bit eccentric, he likes to do things the hard way sometimes, he started with Internet Explorer, uh, and he got that working, and then he got uh, decided that he was going to try something even harder and make it work with HTML units. Um, so, give him his due. He he did a brilliant job. He created WebDriver. WebDriver um, was working and has done all these things. Now we fast forward to 2009. Oh, 2008, really? Oh, yeah, it's about 2008. Uh, after a bit of a interesting lightning talk at GTAC 2007, uh, end of 2007, 2008, Jason and um, Simon start discussing the idea of merging the two frameworks because Selenium is really, really good in uh, most browsers because it's pure JavaScript. WebDriver kind of only really supported two and was, they were working on Firefox. Um, and then 2009, the merger happened. And uh, we, like, we, GTEC 2009, um, there was a big talk about it. 
Uh, Yari, who will be talking later, um, in two days wrote the Ruby bindings for it, um, which just blew everyone out of the water. Um, so suddenly it was just taking flight. You know, we had all this great stuff. Unfortunately, um, you know, as things move on, browser vendors decide that we're going to, uh, we, we think it's a great idea to release often uh, so that, you know, it's been working in the web world for a while, you know, continuous deployment was starting to take uh, fruition at companies like IMVU uh, and Flickr and things like that, so browsers need to, to keep up. Um, so they started increasing their, their cycle of releases. And now this has kind of proved a bit hard to keep up in the Selenium world. Being a group of volunteers, uh, we, we try to fix all the problems when and where we find them. And it's just got worse and kind of worse. So we're, we're at a stage now that like the Selenium project uh, supports from Firefox 3 upwards. Um, so Firefox is, uh, well, Firefox supports is up to 11. Um, hopefully, this weekend or Monday, it'll have Firefox 12 when I land a patch. Um, and Chrome is just, you know, is up at 18 now, you know, because we they're releasing all these things. Um, so we, we're having this really, really big problem that we need to solve. So Simon um, had what he calls the great leap forward, his five-year plan of solving it. Um, and he, he wanted to see about if we could make it a standard. And the problem, the reason is, is that doing browser automation is extremely hard. Um, in English, we have a saying: it's like swimming in treacle. Treacle's like for syrup, and it's you know it's really really hard to, to go against it and do all these things. Um, so now we, we're suddenly having to support all these browsers. Uh, new browsers are coming out. We've seen things like Rock Melt and things like that. Yes, they're just a, a small fork of uh, Chromium, but it just means that you know, from 2004, where there was only really two or uh, three vendors that were prominent, we've, we're up at about ten now. Ten browsers that people tend to use on a different basis and things like that. Uh, and this is including mobile browsers, uh, by the way. Um, so now. It's, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Um, and with like mobile being a really big push forward, it's it's going to get, like become harder. So um, like Mozilla is, uh, is creating a new product which we call Boot to Gecko. Gecko is the underlying framework that drives most uh, Mozilla products. So Thunderbird, Firefox, it does all the JavaScript, does all the rendering, things like that. Um, and now we're going to try and put that into a phone and try and make that a, um, it's a, an operating system because browsers pretty much are operating systems nowadays because they do so much. So we need to solve this. Um, so the reason why we're moving towards a, a standard is that every time someone wants to create a new browser, a new product that's based on a browser, and people want to test it, TVs, etc. Um, we need a standard way to test these applications. So this is the reason why we're doing it. We don't, for, for a group of um, volunteers who just sp spend their free time, I know one or two of them are paid purely to work on it, um, but mostly it's just people who give up their free time to work on this product. And we need to, you know, make their lives easier and to be honest, the people who build the browser understand the browser a lot better than we will ever. Yeah, because uh, like um, Daniel Wagner Hall, Aaron Mara, uh, Mis Misery, and Simon, who kind of they those guys get paid to work on the project full time. Um, they understand browsers, but they've under had to understand it the, the hard way by learning through the source code what it's doing, how it's doing it, things like that. And that's not great because um, this, the browser vendors know browsers. You know that they develop it. They understand every line of code that's in there and what it's doing. Um, and like I said, 
you know, there's more browsers coming to the market. So these are the top five at the moment. Um, but this could easily change, you know. Um, it's not also taking in variations of it. So like, you know, Firefox has got um, the BCG project that's coming up. It won't be released for quite some time. Uh, but that's essentially going to be a browser in a phone or a tablet. Uh, we have Firefox Mobile. We have Firefox for desktop. Then there's all the platforms for desktop, so Windows, Linux, uh, Mac. Uh, and pretty much all of them, except for Internet Explorer, kind of have similar ideas and models that they need to support. So, you know, iOS has got Safari on mobile and things like that. So we need to kind of figure out and solve this problem. So while we're <coughs> developing the standard, um, who are the people who are going to be working on it? Um, the answer is everyone and anyone can work on the standard. Um, if you ever wanted to work on a W3 standard and make a difference to the web, you can do it. Um, like the Selenium project is uh, open source, the W3 standard is open source as well. It's just HTML files at the moment. Um, but anyone and everyone can contribute, and we kind of want people to contribute. Um, Simon and I are the editors of it, and what we, our job, is to write as much as we can um, when, like, we can't find people who would do it. But it's mainly to get the right people to fill in the the, the, the blanks for us. So, you know, as I've been saying, browser automation is really hard, and uh, if you've ever used the WebDriver Advanced User Interactions API. Um, it, you know how it does all these really nice drag and drops and things like that and allows you to do hovers. Um, if you ever look at the code that does that, it's extremely complex. And Erin has done a brilliant job of doing it. So what we've done, um, Simon and I, is that we've told Erin he has to write that part of the spec. And we want, and the thing is, is that we want anyone who wants to contribute to the spec just to d download the source, create, create a patch of what you think it should be doing, how it should be doing it. Hopefully you'll make it along the same lines as what the project is already doing because uh, Selenium is in a unique position for a W3 standard in that we already have tests, we already have a framework that's working against it, we just need to make it a standard. Unlike things like Canvas or Touch Events or things like that, where one vendor might have one way of approaching the problem, another vendor might have a different way, um, we kind of already have an API on how to do it. You've, got, you've all been using it for a while. Um, I, I showed it last year when I was here for Selenium Camp. Um, so we can now just really build on this and get it going. Um, so, when is it going to become a standard? Now, th this is probably one of the, the most frustrating parts of the web. Making something a standard takes years, unfortunately. Um, and the reason why it takes years is that uh, browser vendors don't always agree. Uh, we've seen this for, ye for years with like um, Internet Explorer as an example. They had their own version of JavaScript. They called it JScript. Um, it, you know, it didn't work exactly the same and didn't follow all the right idioms. Um, and you know, it's it's minor things, but it could easily trip you up. Uh, a good example would be in JavaScript, you don't have to put semicolons at the end of the of a line. Uh, the interpreter will just go, "Oh, it's the end of the line. I'll just throw on a semicolon and we'll we'll carry on." JavaScript needs you to put semicolons at the end of the line, otherwise it just really stops working. Um, and we've had numerous um, issues with the Selenium uh, code base where someone's forgot to put a semicolon at the end uh, and suddenly a whole section of IE tests start failing and we can't figure out why and we look at it and it's like, oh, it's because uh, semicolon's missing. And then th this is, you know, problems that if we had pushed this to a vendor, to uh, Microsoft, and said, 
well, you guys know Internet Explorer and you, know, you guys know how it works. Can you help us and solve this? Um, so, ideally, say two years' time from now, we would like to have this in, in um, and working as a standard. Uh, we have two vendors, um, Opera, who have the Opera driver, that is maintained by someone in Opera now. Um, and it, uh, Andreas is doing a brilliant job in showcase, like showing how it works. Um, it works against Opera Mobile, uh, it works in theory against um, t uh, Opera on TVs, uh, desktop, you know, all these really good things. And it's because they, they really like the API. They want all their uh, UI tests, be it against the browser Chrome or the browser content, to use WebDriver in, in some form or another. Uh, Google Chrome is another example. Uh, and Chromium, they, they've, they've built it in. Um, it's part of their waterfall. If their web driver tests fail, they can kind of, they lock down the tree, fix it, um, fix what was causing the problem, because web driver is such a key part of their product nowadays, and they, their way forward. Um, Mozilla's working on a similar project, is part of B2G, because if we can get it working on mobile, we get everything else for free. Uh, because mobile devices are interesting to automate against. I'm sure you've all had the problem of, you know, suddenly your, your phone runs out of memory because you've, you've tried to do all these really cool things and make JavaScript do all these really cool things. Uh, but then your phone dies because it's run out of memory. Um, so we, we've taken the approach that we're starting from mobile and then working backwards. Uh, and it's a project called Marionet, so if you ever uh, want to look it up, just go to um, Mozilla's wiki, uh, wiki.mozilla.org, and uh, search for Marionet. You can see what's happening, you can see all the code that we're doing and things like that and how we're approaching it. Um, at the moment it's, it's, it's going to be Python first, but that's because Mozilla's a Python company. Uh, but once it's there, uh, we're following all the same idioms that the open source project is doing, the Selenium open source project, um, so we can get it done. So, what's the roadmap to getting a standard looking like? Um, it's a long, like I say, it's a long road. It's going to be two years, we need to do a lot of work, um, and we need to solve a lot of problems. But We've already solved the biggest problem. We know what our API is going to look like. Um, into, like between the Selenium commences, we, we kind of call it a Janus API, and that we have a server part and we have a client part. The client part is your, your Ruby, your Java, your .NET, uh, and your Python bindings. Um, the server part is what actually drives the browser. Um, there's a, um, a transport layer between the two of them. We've called that the JSON wire protocol. Um, Yari will go into the semantics of it later. But he, the um, having this in place means that if someone were to follow the JSON wire protocol, they get all the languages for free if they ever implemented it. And that means there's a huge community of testers that just go, oh, I can start doing this straight away. Um, we're not being prescriptive on this, um, it's going to be non-normative, um, but we need to try and solve this. Um, but because like I said, we're, we're in a unique place for a standard. We're, we started with something that's really great and we just need to solve it. Um, there's going to be lots of arguments uh, between browser vendors, like, you know, I don't want to be I don't want to write my uh, API like this or like that. And things are going to change along the way. But every time we need to change something for the standard, we'll make sure that it feeds back into the open source project straight away. Uh, because, you know, you guys are probably our biggest audience. You will tell us when we're doing it wrong, and we're bound to be doing it wrong constantly. And we need to solve these problems. But when we, but like I said, you know, all of you can come contribute to the standard, and I would hope that you would feel that, that you can and you want to. So, when you see that we're doing it wrong, let us know. Um, there's a bugzilla uh, repository for it. 
uh, raise bugs, tell us what we're doing wrong, how we, how we can solve it. Um, we're also going to be starting to write use cases on how to do it. Um, because how we expect people to be using our API and that means that we can tell vendors, oh, you know, this is how uh, this group of people use it, and this is why they find it useful, and then solve it from there. Um, it does hopefully mean that uh, if a browser vendor decides that they don't want to implement the standard, um, you don't, like, they don't, no one has to do these things. Um, it's good for them if they do it, and you know, uh, we, we've seen this with Safari, like there's no real Safari support, both from the Selenium RC API and the <coughs> WebDriver API, um, and how people aren't testing their applications in Safari anymore. So, in my opinion, that means that web applications are not going to be brilliant in Safari, no one's going to support them, and we're not, uh, in hope, like, eventually the browser's just going to die away in market share. You know, except for the few people, diehard fans who will always use it. Um, so if we, you know, write all these use cases, we can prove why it's useful, uh, who's using it, and it prevents any arguments of, oh, I don't want to implement this standard because there's no value in implementing the standard for my users because, you know, we want to move it forward. Um, we are, we're also, you know, fully aware that the, you know, the world is not flat, like they said in the 1400s. Um, we we need to overcome a number of hurdles. We will get there by solving problems as we hit them. Uh, we will do it, and we will be doing it all out in the public. Um, one of the things of like I mean, Minnesota is that uh, you know everything has to be done out in the public, and doing things in the public makes things difficult and longer and harder. Um, but if we have buy-in from everyone, it means that we can get it done and will be done right first time, and that's important. That's very important to get things done. Um, so with that, I know I'm early, but I, I'm expecting a number of questions. So. Um, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I'm sure there must be one or two. Uh, do, do you want to give a microphone to people? Sorry. Hello, David. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'd like to ask about uh, the uh, working with uh, Cascade style sheet uh, sources uh, through the Selenium. Uh, it's kind of the problem that I can't uh, find information uh, in the CSS files and uh, uh, check the, is it uh, right information or not. Uh, so your question is how would you check that you can do CSS? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, is it possible right now? Hey. Yeah, it, it is possible right now. There's an um, uh, API called uh, on Web Elements, I believe. Uh, so depending on the language, it will it'll be something like get CSS value or get uh, style. Is that right, Harry? Yeah. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I had to ask Yari because I know Ruby doesn't uh, have the same API. <laughs> I want to ask, uh, is it possible to override the proxies that now used for iWeb element uh, and reduce uh, uh, page factory or you'll find them by some selector? Uh, we use iWeb element interface and it creates some uh, proxy object internally. So is it possible to override some behaviors in those proxies? And that, uh, your uh, I don't know. Uh, the reason why I don't know is that I've, um, I've never really worked with the Java stuff, and that's in the Java code. Um, I honestly, I wouldn't know. Um, in theory, it sounds like it would be plausible because it's just um, the, the page factories and the proxies are just doing pure reflection. So, in theory, yes. But how you would do that, I don't know. Standard made live. So, what's the timeline 
So um, it's going to be a very long time. It's going to be about two years to get, get this in. Um, it is probably the worst problem with the W3C at the moment, is getting standards live. Um, if you look at something like Canvas as an, as an example, Canvas has been in browsers for about four years and is not a standard. Um, and because no one can agree on certain things. Um, just because it's not a standard doesn't mean that it won't go into browsers. Uh, we've seen that like Opera have already put it into the browser, Google have put it into Chrome and Chromium, um, Mozilla's putting it into Firefox, so it's already there. Um, it's more getting other, like everyone else involved. So um, Microsoft uh, have shown some interest in the standard, but they want to kind of see um, a, a full spec of what it's going to look like, how it's going to work, um, before they'll even come to ta the table and discuss things with us. Um, Apple are ignoring all requests at the moment for them to join the conversation. Um, but the thing is, it's a game. Um, you know, we, we've seen with like um, touch events and with um, widgets that some, br some browser vendors will wait until the last moment to join a working group and solve these problems. And when they do, they'll just go, oh, I have a patent for this. You can't actually make this a standard anymore. Um, and, you know, we've had, like, those two uh, standards have recently been hit by this, uh, which then prolongs it. Because now this, instead of being solved by a bunch of engineers, now needs to be solved by a bunch of lawyers. Because they need to work out, do, do browser vendors now need to pay royalties to this? Um, and things like that. Um, it's one of the most negative parts about uh, the patent system in the US, really, is that suddenly people will make a patent on anything and then try claim royalties on it, even though browsers as a whole should be just really pushing the web forward, making you do really cool things, like HTML5 allows you to build these really cool products and really cool tools, uh, and we should never um, stop people from doing that. We should never just block them. And, you know, saying that you have a patent to a working group suddenly prolongs things. And it can pro like, lawyers like to do, like to talk, they like to write the letters. Um, so this means that it can, like, add another year or multiple years to getting something into a standard. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, if uh, Selenium WebDriver will become some kind of standard, how this will how, how this will affect the software development process of Selenium web drivers. So you have so, two weeks experience, you know, more than thousand this uh, issues and how this will affect it. So um, what it would mean is that the open source project would delete a lot of code. Um, and that's a good thing because like there's, there's thousands of lines of code that need to be supported. Uh, and if we can delete a lot of code uh, for a bunch of volunteers, it makes life easier. Um, the open source project would be, just become a place to support the client-side bindings. But to be honest, once they've been written and all the tests passing, um, and all the browser vendors, and like an, and they, they are following the standard, and browser vendors are following the standard as well. Um, the client side bindings will be written once and then will be forgotten about. And everything, like all the, ser like the server side stuff, so stuff in the browser, will be moved and shipped to uh, the browser vendors. Um, there's, um, there's a thing that we call the atoms, and this is like, it's. Um, JavaScript snippets of code. Uh, it's called an atom because it's the smallest amount of code that we can get away with to solve a problem. So to do a click, to type, whatever. Um, what we can do is that every time a browser vendor decides that they're going to follow the standard, we can just go, well, there's these atoms. You don't really have to do that much work. You just take them. Do what you want with them. It's yours. It's open source. 
Um, there's licenses, obviously, but we've tried to make the license as flexible as possible. But it's yours, and you, you know, you do all the work to make them work. But once they work, like you're, you're speaking to them properly, you'll get support. And that's like you know, really, really good part is that we can just kind of ship all the atoms away um, because once they're done, they're done, and the client's are okay. Once that's done, that's done. Um, the things that we need to solve from the client side point of view is um, how we interact with HTML5 elements. So at the moment, um, there's only two bindings, if I remember correctly, that do like geolocation and things like that. Um, and though, you know, we need to solve those problems. But we can't so solve those problems because HTML5 is so, is being moved around so much at the moment. Um, it, they're getting close to finishing it off, but HTML5 has been uh, in draft for you know three, four years already. Um, so it, we can, once that's been solved, we can solve the the web driver thing. Um, what we're also trying to do in the browser uh, in uh, web driver is that we're trying to make our standard uh, rely on other standards because if if something is already kind of locked in, so HTML5, there's already certain parts of it that will not change because if people have agreed on that part, it will not change. WebDriver then goes, well, we, we actually rely on that. Um, a good example would be focus, because lots of people like to run tests in parallel, uh, run tests in parallel on the same machine, um, not always using um, uh, like a, a frame buffer. Um, so you know, we want things to be in focus. HTML5 is a good example of, you know, we don't always need focus, because HTML5 applications should work when the browsers don't have focus. It's part of the HTML5 spec. Uh, so if, we, if WebDriver goes, well, we need that uh, to work, um, so that, you know, people can run tests in parallel. And now that we've, you know, people can run tests as quickly as possible, um, and, you know, and, you know, we, we don't have to worry. Uh, uh, David, um, is it expected to have new binding, bindings between languages and a view of web drive? Um, so, uh, yes, we want more languages to join it. Um, and because of the way this, the, like we're describing the, the API that we have for the client side and the server side, if you Follow like any. Um, Yori will get into the, like the real detail of this later. But anyone who um, wants to write a language binding can write one right now. They can do whatever they want because they don't need to care about how um, the browser does it. They just need to understand the transport mechanism and then make it idiomatic for that language. And, uh, is it an available information about the planet uh, bindings to be implemented? To, to not uh, redo anything that uh, um, we can no. <laughs> the, so the, the project at the moment only officially supports four languages, um, but there are a lot more languages that are uh, that you can use it with. So like the, the four languages are uh, .NET, uh, Java, Python, and Ruby. But that's mainly because they cover like the eighty percent of what people are developing these days. Uh, not that long ago, someone wrote a VB script version of WebDriver. Uh, I don't know why they would ever want to have done that, but they've done that. Um, the, there's PHP uh, that Facebook maintain, so uh, it's it's not a, like for me uh, as an API, like someone who designs APIs and designs software, uh, their APIs, but. Awful, like awful, because you kind of have to understand how the JSON wire protocol works, uh, which is not nice. Um, but then I've I heard a rumor that someone was working on a Haskell version. Um, so it's more there's no official list except for the the four, and then from there people have made their own. Um, I believe there's also a Perl one nowadays, but I don't know how finished that is. Uh, hi David. Oh, sorry. Uh, is uh, Safari browser really supported now? Or? No. So it's same. It's, uh, so it's so we can test the Google Chrome as uh, on the Mac, and it's the same as Safari. So it, it um, 
the only same like the similarity would be WebKit, um, but the JavaScript engine is different. So if you rely on JavaScript uh, to do certain transitions, calculations, whatever, you can't rely on that. Um, so, but in theory, a lot of the browsers do things exactly the same. Uh, so you can you can be somewhat confident that your application is tested if you were to use uh, Chrome. But to be honest, you could also use Firefox in the same breath because uh, Selenium doesn't really do UI, like check that the UI is perfect. It does functional testing. So you could use Firefox, you could use uh, Internet Explorer. Well, you, you wouldn't want to, but you, you could in theory. Thank you. So, question there. Uh, hi. My, my question is mainly about uh, releasing process. So uh, when, when you when you uh, I, I have a mail list uh, I receive a mail list from Google Code every day and there are lots of issues there. So you you uh, have uh, uh, like release notes mm -hmm. uh, each release, but I, I I don't know I don't know really know how, how can I uh, find like okay I have this issue. I reported it, but I, I cannot receive like uh, like uh, a reply a, a few few weeks even, and uh, I don't really know who, who else uh, faced with this. Uh, so so I would really know uh, if you are going to improve this, and if you will add some, that would be just brilliant, brilliant to add this something like acknowledged issue, interesting things. Uh, so as I've said. Uh, as, I, as I've said uh, numerous times through through my talk, is that Selenium is maintained by a group of volunteers, people who give up their time freely. We don't always have time to triage bugs. Uh, it would be great if we could. Um, if something is taking longer than you expect, uh, have a look at our source code. Maybe you can solve it. Um, <laughs> If, if you can't solve it, the best way to actually sp to interact with developers is come speak to us on IRC. So uh, all the leads um, for the Selenium project are on IRC pretty much all day, every day type of thing. Uh, come speak to us there and see what we can do. Because if it's something trivial and like we can go, oh yes, we know exactly how to solve that, we can solve it. If it's, um, I'm trying to use PayPal, Pay, uh, PayPal Sandbox has some weird uh, SSL and I don't know how to get around it, we might not solve it straight away. Um, or if it's... Uh, no, no, I, 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 mean, I mean, okay, you, you, you acknowledge the issue and you know this is the issue, like, like hey, uh, I'm asking like, why don't you just, uh, when are you going to solve this? So when are, when are we going to solve it is when we can get time to solve it. <laughs> the, the, this is what I'm saying, is that we're a, we're a volunteer, we're volunteers. The, only the Google employees work on it full time. Uh, and realistically they, they working on two forks. Google have their own version of Selenium that they've modified uh, and they contribute back into this, uh, the open source projects. Uh, so we try our best to to acknowledge uh, bug reports. Um, Alexi, who's doing a talk sometime today, um, is an absolute machine going through bugs and trying to make sure that they go to the right people. Um, there's another person, uh, Luke, who works for Salesforce in the US. He does another great job of looking at, uh, just kind of constantly going through bugs. Um, the problem that we also have is that a lot of bugs are raised. Um, the bugs are very low quality bugs. It's just, I've tried to click this button, it doesn't work. Realistically, uh, we can't solve that. Because uh, like, we don't know the HTML, we don't know this. Um, one of the problems that tends to come up is, uh, like I've tried to solve, uh, I've tried to do this, um, it doesn't work but I'm not allowed to show you my website. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry to hear you have a problem. Have a nice day. <laughs>
that, that, that's going to be like the, the average answer. We'll, we'll, we'll make it slightly nicer, but you know, um, to we're, we're volunteers. You know, Yari works for um, um, a company. He, uh, he he gives up his evenings. He gives up some work, some time during the day to look after the Ruby stuff. Um, I make sure that like. The, the QA team can do whatever they need to, and part of that is Selenium, so I'm allowed to spend a certain amount of time on the Selenium project. Um, but, you know, that if you start looking at the people who are actually working on full-time, um, it might be about five people. So we look after thousands of lines of code, and then there's thousands of lines, uh, thousands of websites who do interesting things and unique things, and we go, well, we need to solve this, but how do we solve it? And this is why if we can move this into browser vendors, we can then go, well, you guys need to add this to your test suite. And then they can pass it on to their QA team who can try write a test for it and share it out. Um, so, because, you know, moving from five people to companies that have, you know, hundreds to thousands of employees will make better support of the Selenium project. We can then go. Ah, oh, this this problem has been acknowledged. You know, if it's a client side binding, and we go, ah, oh, yes. You know, I've I've written this. I was a bit stupid. You can solve it, but it needs to be solved really quickly by separating out the server side stuff and the client side stuff. So that the open source project would just be the client side stuff. Cool. I would be very surprised if we did move uh, move, it, move that forward, um, mainly because it's more of a, um, a web service. Yeah, so it's it's more of a um, because SOAP is used in web services. Um, Selenium it doesn't really fit in with the model that Selenium is trying to solve. Um, there's other tools that you could use that will solve that a, a lot better than we will ever be able to do. Because loading up SOAP, you can go, all oh, right, there's this, this is how um, these definitions are, and I need to do it. Um, but most people won't be doing that in a the browser. They'll be using uh, like curl or whatever to solve these problems. No, but you're thinking if it can be possible to put everything inside, but you have for the web Selenium or Jenkins or SOAP UI for the source. So to have it in one place, something like that. Um, personally, my opinion would be separate concerns. So find the right tool for the right job. Selenium is the right tool for uh, browsers. SOAP UI would be a good tool for web services for REST and certain SOAP. Um, and I would separate them there and leave them like that because that solves that problem. Um, what you want to stop, you never want to go down the route of trying to solve one, one um, like solve all problems with one thing because then you'll start thinking about, oh, how do I test my database with Selenium? And that's never a good idea because now you need to suddenly open up your database to be worked through a browser, then you, there's all the, you can, like you'll have so many different bugs along, like potential bugs along the way, where you just want to speak directly and go, this, this, did this happen? Yes, great. So I would try, personally, I would try to separate them and just keep them separate. Um, I know it means that you need to have extra skills, but those, it means that you'll be doing the job slightly better on both parts because you won't be trying to merge or trying to do really funky things. Um, yeah, I do understand the Selenium is fully a web automation tool, but what's about the uh, Flex or Flash support? You know, and it's not really good from Selenium. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> Selenium is um, a browser automation tool. Uh, Flash is not, it, while it's in a browser, is not part of a browser standard. So it's not part of the DOM. It's, we manipulate the DOM. Um, plus, Flash is on the way out. <laughs> uh, hello. 
uh, I want to specify the priorities for issue fixing for the list of browsers because uh, many of us don't like IE, mm -hmm. but uh, all of us have to work with it. Mm -hmm. And we have a number of issues with IE9. For example, since God, the models Windows was fixed in the previous releases. So um, I, I want to know, uh, for example, we have a fix uh, for Mozilla. And yeah. Every every fix works in Mozilla first time. Yeah. But, but uh, maybe it is a wish uh, to, to get the next fix for IE, especially for IE 8 and IE 9. So fixes into Selenium? For WebDriver. Um, if, again, patches are most welcome and we will gladly take them and we will gladly put them in. Um, Jim Evans is probably one of the nicest people you will ever meet and will try so he will bend over backwards to solve problems for you. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't work for Microsoft, he doesn't know the potential gotchas and things like that and he will work as hard as he can to make it work. Um, but sometimes browsers don't make it easy. Um, so an example is we don't have Safari support because Safari are making it extremely hard to automate their browser. Um, but again, if you have a problem, come speak to us on IRC. We'll, solve, we'll try to solve it for you. You know, it might mean that we can go, oh yes, we know exactly what that is. But at the moment we have lots of bugs, um, lots of bugs with poor bug reports, uh, lots of bugs that where we've asked for more information and no one's got back to us. Uh, and when you raise a bug, you will automatically get emails from it. So, you know, we know that people are getting emails, they're just not replying to us. So then at what point do we then decide that, you know, this is a valuable bug and this one's not, when people aren't actually interacting with us. So if you, have a, if you do have a problem, just come speak to us on RC and we'll try to solve it for you. We, we're, not, we're a nice bunch of guys, you know, um, and we try, we want to make sure that your lives are easier because if you guys have, like, the community is the biggest thing about Selenium. It's the reason why WebDriver um, and Water, like, only grew to a certain pole, point, is that the Selenium community, for some unknown reason, the, the community around it just grew and grew and grew. And that's why um, WebDriver wants to come in to the Selenium thing, because it, it gets an automatic community and we can solve it. Like, it wants, Jason wants to solve certain problems, Simon wants to solve, solve them, and we, we're doing them. But um, during, during the day, we can um, come speak to me and we'll see what we can do. And I'll, I'll try to solve your problem for you, if I can. Cool, thanks guys.